I want to start by um, telling you um, a story about um, a person called Amanda Boxtel. Amanda was uh, living, uh, or is living, in, um, uh, in Aspen. And when she was 24 years old, uh, she was doing her favorite activity, downhill skiing, learning to become a ski instructor. And um, she fell. And as a result of that, uh, she sustained a, a spinal cord injury and uh, is now in a wheelchair. In spite of that, she has actually stayed extremely active. She has gone through many embryonic stem cell treatments outside of US uh, to try to get some feeling back, uh, but she is still in a, in a wheelchair. Um, it is amazing that uh, when you start looking at the numbers of paralyzed in this country, Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation published last year a study that uh, was extremely comprehensive, the far best so far, and it proved that there were actually six million people that are suffering from some kind of paralysis. This is one out of every 50 Americans. This is as many as the city of, uh, of uh, in, in this case, we, we have here, I have to kind of uh, uh, look at the pictures and, 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 and remember where, where the pictures are from. This is Austin. Um, then we have El Paso. Uh, we have uh, Houston, Dallas, and last but not least, San Antonio. As many as all these cities together. And uh, what is also astonishing is that when you look better into the numbers, especially the ones on the spinal cord insert, is that most of it is accidents. It is either recreational accidents or accidents because of uh, driving, etc. So these are not uh, people who are in their 50s, 60s, 70s. These are young people. These are people in their 20s, 30s, and 40s. Just like Amanda when she had her accident. So here they are in the prime of their life doing crazy stuff and then suddenly just they hit a wall. And when they wake up and start exploring their options, and talking to doctors and people around them, they hear all over, no, you can't do that. You can't do this. And uh, it's obviously devastating, because you're talking about not only very young individuals, you're pro talking about individuals that are taking risk oftentimes, extremely active. So uh, <clears throat> what is even more astonishing here is that when they start exploring their options, it's pretty much wheelchairs in terms of walking. And you look now over to another part of um, um, disability, which has to do with amputees. And that's really my background. I, I have over the last 15 years uh, helped amputees to get back uh, to, to walking and even running, three months after their double amputation, I've seen many people go towards running. This gentleman here, Oscar Pistarius, was uh, one of the persons that we sponsored. And um, you might have heard about him. He's from South Africa, was often referred to as uh, the blade runner or uh, the fastest man on no legs. And uh, he, uh, ama he's amazing. He's uh, trying now to qualify for the, for the Olympics. Not Paralympics, Olympics. And uh, in that process, when people started looking at him, they thought, he has an advantage. He has an advantage. <laughs> it's unfair. <laughs> he doesn't have any legs, but he's running on something there. And uh, we uh, <clears throat> worked with him, uh, with many good uh, people, scientists, uh, PR, media,
to get that banned, basically, because he was banned from basically competing. And we got uh, actually then to see the light, and now he, he actually can qualify, and he's busy doing that now for, for London. And it's uh, going to be very exciting watching that. But now coming back to spinal cord injuries and people in wheelchairs that are still sitting, there's something wrong with this picture, right? Here we have an amputee running, competing for the Olympics, being claimed of having an unfair advantage, and we can't even get spinal cord injury to walk. So that was a picture that just didn't make sense, and it certainly doesn't make sense to somebody like Amanda, that is extremely active. She has actually did, done what so many other um, before her and, and after, she has uh, continued doing her favorite sport skiing. She has a customized ski to do that, um, but she can't walk. So, <coughs> at the University of uh, Berkeley, there were um, a couple of people who had the idea to change that. So that's the idea. And to come up with a device, a robotic device, that would actually help people like Amanda to get out of the chair, st stand up, walk, maybe first in a rehabilitation setting to keep it very safe, and then move onwards into their homes, and then into the woods, or whatever they like to be doing. Just like you would be wearing a prosthetic leg. Very ambitious idea, they've been working on it now for 10 years, and it was uh, built on a platform that we created uh, to help soldiers to carry weight on the back, up to 200 pounds. So there's a lot of expertise involved in creating exoskeletons at UC Berkeley. And they formed a company called Berkeley Bionics that now is uh, getting into gear now to commercialize this new state-of-the-art technology which we like to call ELEX. ELEX stands for Exoskeleton Lower Extremity Gate System. And uh, as you see, you think about robots, you often think about, what, Iron Man, right? Avatar, something very bulky. This is actually extremely thin, lightweight, and uh, the reason why they managed to get it that way is, again, their cooperation with getting soldiers to carry something on the back. You obviously can't have very heavy exoskeletons uh, around your body. So, um, so that was very important. They, um, they, they did really a thorough analysis on, uh, in terms of who is it uh, in the beginning that we want to focus on. And we are talking about people who have, we call it self-transferable. They are able to actually get into the wheelchairs. They have arm strength, hand strength enough to do that. Uh, they can be of different heights. And um, so it's pretty much suitable for rehabilitation centers in the beginning. It's easy to put on. It's easy to caliber to different individuals. It's also very important. And um, as you see here on this picture, they thought about, okay, we have to make it even easier for uh, disabled to get into it, so we slide it a little bit apart when you get into it. And uh, it has what is probably the, I've kind of pointed out so far, so kind of the practical things about it, but when it comes to recovery and just walking generally, you want to make sure that it walks so that it looks natural that your knee bendings and so on are all kind of uh, just like you see normally. And, uh, and the speed. Most of the time in robots, speed is an issue. This one, you can pretty much adjust to the way you walk. You will start slowly in the beginning. Amanda hadn't walked for 18 years when she started using it. And uh, so obviously you start slowly, but then you pick it up. And we are seeing now the people who have been using it the most, they are, they are actually walking quite fast. And uh, <clears throat> it has actually, the way we control it is actually through crutches. So actually you put your crutch forward, it has sensors in it, 
and that will move your left leg. Right crutch moves your left leg. So it's uh, the first intelligent smart crutches. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we have um, a battery lifetime that lasts through the whole day. Obviously, working with soldiers, we are very used to that. These guys have been extremely good at scaling uh, down the energy uh, that you need to actually walk um, in the mountains, and, and that is helping here as well. So with that said, I would like to show you a uh, video that actually gives you a little bit better idea about our vision with this. So let's just get the camera rolling. When a person becomes paralyzed, a level of their independence is also robbed from them. And that affects us psychologically and our spirits. There's a part of us that dies. I've been trying to visualize myself a contraption that would enable me to get up and walk. I thought, well, is it going to be an avatar, perhaps a robot? And then I received the phone call to try this new technology, the e-legs. I heard from, from so many, many people, people that the first thing that they, they encounter after an injury uh, or an amputation uh, is the word no. And I think, I think we are demonstrating, demonstrating here that there is, is no such word as no. Elex is, is really built on the platform or, or the legacy of, uh, of HERC. HERC is an application that we made for the military and we have licensed it to uh, Lockheed Martin. In 2005, when, when Berkeley, Berkeley Bionics was founded, founded we, we entered a license, license agreement with the University of California to commercialize the innovative exoskeleton technology that was developed at the Robotics and Human Engineering Laboratory. ELEX is, as an engineer, one of the most satisfying projects to work on because it's an integration of so many interesting talents, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, program control, and really when you bring all those aspects together, that's when you get a really innovative product. Take my, my first step in, in the e-legs was, was just astounding, astounding because, because I bent my, my knee for the first time in 18 years and I placed my heel on the ground and then I transferred my weight and then I took another step and another one and it was so natural and that was what really gripped me. In my field of spinal cord injury, uh, we work with people who typically are paralyzed for the rest of their life. For the first time in history, we can start to think about giving the movement back. I think what's particularly exciting about exoskeleton research currently is that it's becoming much more compact and affordable and therefore potentially useful in medical applications. This can become the first uh, rehabilitative device. After someone's injured, they go from walking right back to walking. While they still have the muscle memory within them, they're able to power up and walk in a very safe, tethered environment. But to keep those muscles firing, to weight bear on their legs, keep the blood circulating, their digestive system is working well. There's huge therapeutic benefits for this device that then will become a preventative measure in the long term because our bodies are meant to be walking upright and moving. When I think about the emotions that are connected with me being in a chair all day long, and I think of the, the feeling of being able to just go outside and grab some firewood and bring it back inside. Being able to reach for the upper cupboard. I, I am not able to do that today. And, and Elix demonstrates to me that that is possible. In the 
future, we will introduce another device that is specially designed for homes. That device will actually allow you to step in it in the morning, go and have your breakfast, then you drive off to work, even wearing it. You can walk in the park, you can go with your friends to the ball game, and it's uh, pretty much your companion during the whole day. The most exciting possibility for the e legs for me is to take it outside and into the real world. I'm not meant to be in my wheelchair, sitting down and rolling. I'm going to be tall in my body, to walk on sidewalks, to go into a restaurant, but most importantly, to hike in nature. This is not a wave of the future. The e legs is happening right now. I don't, I don't have, have to be hopeful. This, this is reality. Thank you. With that said, um, let me give you Amanda Boxtel. <laughs> As you can see, um, it's a very natural movement. She's walking at her pace. She could walk faster. This is how she likes it. <laughs> and Slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> and there's another thing that she told me uh, that she likes, uh, and she has missed a lot over those 18 years, is to hug somebody at the eye level. So I'm going to hug you now. Oh. <laughs> 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 so, um, Amanda, how long have you been uh, now using Elex? It was on July 25th of this year that I took my first step in Elex. It was my first step toward freedom and liberation. In 18 years of paralysis, and now I've ha I have about 25 hours clocked under my belt of walking, and here I am, standing tall, independently, all on my own. <laughs> and um, do you feel any different since you've been using it? The therapeutic benefits of e-legs for me with my personal experience is really phenomenal in that I no longer have swelling in my legs, I have blood circulating in my legs, they're warm and pink, and, uh, and I'm weight-bearing on my bones. But more than anything, the psychological and emotional benefits really take me beyond anything, beyond my wildest imaginings. I'm able to stand upright, to look at you eye to eye, to have that heart-to-heart -heart hug that I just love. And more than anything, e-legs enables me to soar with my own wings. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. This is so great, and um, uh, you give so much hope to many people. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for helping me live my dream. <laughs> <coughs> um, in terms of uh, now, if you look at what has been happening and, um, and why we see something like this, it is obviously because scientists have been, especially in the bionic, era. They have been extremely hard working in the last 10 years 
getting to where we are now. It's, it's a development of uh, where we are merging, really, the body with technology. And that merger is happening at a, at a lightning speed, as you can see. For example, IBM has mapped the brain out. This will be amazing to help out with dealing with trauma and disabilities. Uh, you know that uh, we can give cochlear implants to people who are deaf and want to hear. And, uh, and now, just lately, we are introducing uh, products that give uh, blind people uh, a vision again. So this is amazing development that is happening. And uh, now, in a year from now, no later, in rehabilitation centers first, we will actually give ELEX to spinal cord injured and people that are bound to wheelchairs and give them the ability to walk. <laughs> What is playing a big role here, obviously, is the technology. And uh, there are many state-of-the-art technologies. You, you see there's a battery pack here that is uh, getting uh, slimmer uh, as, as, as we speak. Uh, this one actually gives you six hours of battery lifetime. It can go down to easily down to two hours, depending on what you need. We can make things slimmer. That will help. Motors and sensors are getting slimmer and more efficient than, than ever. And, uh, and then clothing, for instance. Uh, there are sensory-based clothing that can react to sound and uh, to uh, light, etc. All this will help out. But what uh, originally um, the University of Berkeley and then Berkeley Bionics, they have taken a very practical approach here. We tried not to, uh, you get lost often talking about bionics as almost like cyborgs, and, uh, and, and, uh, and oftentimes these things end up really as uh, just university projects. Um, but here we have taken a really practical approach. Uh, we are focusing on giving people like Amanda, um, and much earlier on, after the injury, the way to recover and empower them, really, to have a mobility option so that we can literally shatter that wall that I showed you here behind me and mute those words, uh, you will never walk again. Thank you very much.